What is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter. So good to have you in my studio today. What are we doing today? We are going to throw some plates. So we're gonna throw some large dinner plates, which I don't do very often, but my cousin, uh, Linnea, and future husband, Brandon, are getting married, and I'm doing a wedding registry for them. Basically, if you go to my website, johnschmidpottery.com slash Linnea and Brandon, they have a list, a price list, so then on Linnea and Brandon's invitations that they're sending out, people can go there and then email me with what they wanna buy, and then I make it, the set, it's like, dinner plates, salad plates, bowls, cups, and then they pay me directly, and then I give the finished pottery to the bride and groom. And so it's kind of cool. I don't do this very often. Please don't message me asking me to do this for you because I just do it for um, family and friends and uh, people that want to do it. So basically, it's a way to get a whole pottery set uh, paid for by your guests instead of you. I'm excited. So we the wedding isn't until December. I thought I got to get the plates done. Might as well get them done now, and then I can glaze them later because... I kind of want to talk th through some of the glazing options with Linnea and Brandon. So we're gonna throw some plates, but we're also doing a Q&A. So I asked on Instagram if you guys had any questions and we got about like 100 some responses and I printed out the first like 75 or 80 questions. So while we're throwing this and getting the clay prepped and everything, we're gonna answer some of your guys' questions. Anyway, we're just gonna go through them and start cranking them out. So thanks to everyone on Instagram that sent us a question. If you don't follow us on Instagram, go check us out at John Schmidt Pottery. That's the easiest way to follow along with me on a daily basis through the stories and the posts and the whatever. Hey guys, this is Future John. I just wanted to let you know that we have an Etsy restock happening on Friday. This Friday at 10.30 a.m. We're putting like 40 to 50 pots up. So if you guys wanna buy some pots, cups, mugs, tumblers, couple planters. We let the patrons on Patreon know first, so they got first pick. Um, but then we're putting up the rest of the pots Friday, 1030. Check it out. All right, let's go back to past John. Throw some plates. Let's do it. So for plates, let's start, let's start, uh, let's get some clay, huh? Always starts with clay. So we're gonna throw this with a nice buff stoneware from Continental Clay. Okay, so the plates that we're doing are these large dinner plates. Plates are really tough because they warp really easily, so you gotta make sure that you dry them very slowly. Um, you really gotta baby them. That's what you gotta do. So you gotta follow them through the process, make sure they're drying really slowly, consistently. You gotta make sure that they are really consistent thickness. We're gonna start with about three and a half pounds per plate. This was three and a half pounds, and this is like a 12 inch-ish dinner plate. First question, any recommendations for good wheels for cheap? My recommendation for a wheel is a good brand that's used. So I have a Scut wheel. If you can find a used one of those, that's a great wheel. Uh, Brent, Amico, Shimpo, like any of the big brands, find a used one. That's what I recommend. Are you going to be doing another artist critique on YouTube? Probably, I would say yes. All right, three and a half right there. How do you recenter a bowl slash mug if it gets off center while pulling? Um, the only way to really do that is to pull the clay up and then cut the top off and then pull the clay up and then cut the top off again. That's probably the best way to do it. What's my favorite thing to throw? Not plates. Probably, I mean, I can get into a really good flow throwing mugs and cups just because I do that so much. But I'd say like bigger bowls when you get a really nice big bowl, that's probably my favorite thing to throw. How do you throw a lid and a jar? I've seen a couple different methods, not sure what to try. So for lids, I, I, I don't do jars very often because I don't find that it's worth the time. They just don't really sell very well. But whenever I have done them, I'll just throw them in two pieces. So I'll throw the jar, measure it with calipers, and then throw the lid, two different pieces. I know some people throw them one piece and then cut it, but I don't do that. Any tips or tricks on how to start a YouTube channel? My tr best tip and trick for starting a YouTube channel is fall in love with making videos. If you don't love making videos, it gets really tough. So I found myself starting to love making videos and that's why I think it's been successful and I've had longevity. When did I start wheel throwing? College. The most annoying thing that happens while throwing. 
I think the most annoying thing is when you're not perfectly centered. When you start throwing and you realize, oh, I should have just centered for like five more seconds and this would be way easier. Because having things centered is key. What do I listen to when I'm in the studio? Well, when I'm not filming, I listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of like Tim Ferriss, Freakonomics, some business like financial ones, um, audiobooks. I started listening to quite a few audiobooks recently and music, you know, good old Blink-182, going to a show, AJR, recently, and I've been listening to a lot of AJR. Folksy, bluesy, Mumford & Sons, stuff like that. Do you work out? How many hours do you work with clay? In the summertime, I don't actually like work out that much, but I bike a lot of places. Like I usually bike everywhere. I try and bike everywhere. And I wakeboard like five days a week, so those are pretty good workouts. Then in the winter, I'll do some lifting and some try and bike, like stationary bike. Plus I just throw a lot of pots. This is kind of like a workout right now. Okay, how do you avoid small cracks on the base of your pots? I've never really had any trouble with this, although I know that people have issues with S cracks. Usually the reason that you get S cracks on the bottom is because either your base isn't a consistent thickness, so you have uneven drying, or you're leaving too much water. So when you're, when you're done throwing, you just need to get all that water up. So too much water or inconsistent amount of clay. What's your favorite color? Blue. When will the next Etsy restock happen? This week. Uh, how do you manage work and throwing and coffee shop and family? It seems like so much. You know, I spent a lot, like four or five years on the coffee shop, kind of getting that to a place where it was, it's not really reliant on me anymore. So I think that's a huge part of it. It is, it's, it's busy. I'm, I live a full, full life but it's usually doing a lot of things that I like and that I want to be doing, so I can't complain. It's a lot. It'll see what happens when we have our second kid here pretty soon. Uh, how did you get into pottery? I have a whole video about my whole story getting into pottery. I'll link it here, so if you want to check it out. Will I open up my new studio during the Art Wander this fall? This fall, I'm part of this art show every year um, around Carver County. I'm not going to have it here this fall, mostly because my wife is due with our baby like right around that time. And so if she's like in the hospital and I'm there, then I don't want to have a bunch of people at my house. So it's going to be at Mocha Monkey this fall for me. And then next year, fall of 2020, the Art Wander will be out here in the studio. So that's that. All right, first page, done. I see you're working on slabby things. Do you have any tips, tricks, advice for hand building? Yeah, I started doing a little bit of hand build stuff, which is kind of fun. I don't have any, I don't know. I'm not that good of a hand builder. I shouldn't give any tips or tricks. I throw th maybe in a year. I'd love to have a mug from you. Cool, not really a question, but uh, hopefully either come by to Waconia to Mocha Monkey or I'll have stuff online hopefully this week for sale. Good non-commercial sized kilns for hobbyists. I mean, all the companies like Scut, they have like littler kilns. So if you go check out, like I think the kiln, the Scut 818 um, is a smaller one. And yeah, if you're just a home hobbyist potter, like smaller kilns are definitely the way to go or else it just takes forever to fill them. How did you know pottery would be the profession for you? Well, that first class I took in college, I just never wanted to stop. I just kept like following what was fun and what I was doing and just, Kept on going. Bought a wheel, bought a kiln, and just never stopped. I'm sh if I one day wake up and I hate pottery, then I'm sure I'll just stop doing it. But hopefully that doesn't happen as we got a little bit invested now. On average, how many pots do you throw per day? And do you throw every day? I do not throw every day. It varies widely. I'd say on average, it's maybe like 15 a day, maybe 10 to 15 a day, because some days I throw like 20 or 30. Some days I don't throw anything, so. I'm from Iran. Thank you for this. Share more about that's not a question at all. Does, but thank you. Does your clay contain grog or do you ever use clay bodies with grog? Yes, this is buff stoneware. It has grog in it. We're gonna move over to the wheel right now. All right, we got nine balls of clay. We got four sheets of questions. <laughs> Let's do this thing, huh? Let's do it. We got bats from Continental Clay. When will you release John the Potter merch slash t-shirts? Check it out. 
but I don't have them for sale online. They were just a special thing for the Kickstarter that we did. Next question, could you try and make a Shibora Dashi? If I had any idea what that was, I could maybe try and make it. How to take project off the bat without messing it up. That takes a lot of time and experience. I remember trying to do that a few years ago and I just like was really bad at it, but now I do it now and it's not so bad. Do you ever spend time doing other art than ceramics. No, no. Besides ceramics, I'm a pretty bad artist. Once I found pottery, that was kind of like, oh, I can be an artist. How long, how did you get started and what was your first setup like? So I first got started in college, never wanted to stop, bought a wheel, bought a kiln. My parents were nice enough to let me put them in their basement when I was living with them. That was my first setup, a little corner of their basement. So for these plates, I'm just using the bat as kind of my measurement for how big they should be. So that was my first setup. If you paint on glazes, will they create drips like the glazes you dip? So I find that whenever you paint it on, like with a brush, you have to put like so many, like at least three or four or five layers. Like it just goes on so much thinner when you use brushes. That's why I like to dip, because it's just faster, way easier, and way more consistent. Like if you're brushing it on, and you brush like a little bit more on this side, on this side, then it just, you can tell. So, so it's possible to get them to drip. Just depends on how much time and effort you wanna put in. In your opinion, what are the first three steps to becoming a potter? First, become interested in learning. Sign up for a class. Third step, take class. <laughs> Sorry if that's too simple. Fourth step, watch John the Potter's YouTube channel. Fifth step, build studio, make art. There you go, there's five steps. Did you go to college? Yes, I went to college. I was a business management major. I did take a class towards the end of college in ceramics and that's how I got into it. How do you compress pieces? Hey, look at that. So compression really is kind of a myth. Like what you really are thinking about is making the clay even. Like that's what I'm doing with this rib right here is I'm, comp I'm compressing. But what you're really doing is just making sure that it's the same thickness here as it is here as it is here so that it dries evenly. But yes, that's, I mean, they teach you to compress by going like this, which it's not really about compression. It's more just about getting it even. Okay, page two, done. We're on a roll. We are on a roll and we're only on our first plate. All right, and I'm gonna put my little signature potter swirl in there. And then I'm gonna knock it down a little bit. So we're not getting like food scraps stuck in there. Boom, one plate, donezo. What's your scariest pottery story? Maybe like when I sent off like a whole dinnerware set to Texas and like half of it broke. I get a call from the guy that ordered it from me back when I like would take custom orders, which I don't really do anymore. And he's like, yeah, like all the plates broke. And I was like, oh, that was really scary. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. What's my favorite shape to throw? Big bowls. Someone asked, Spoon rest. I don't know if you really got the point of the Q&A. Do I ever have pots cave in because they were too thin? Not too much anymore, you know? I used to, but I can really tell when they're getting thin now and I can, I can react quick enough to let up. Luke Bonecutter asks, do you need a business degree to start a ceramic oriented coffee shop cafe? The answer to that is no, no. I mean, having a business degree definitely helped me kind of just understand, but it was definitely not necessary. What do you recommend for a good quality pottery machine? Is that a wheel you're asking about or a kiln? Uh, either way, I'd say if you're starting off, just get one that is a good quality brand and try and find a used one because they are expensive. My first kiln was used. My first wheel was used. Peg Pottery asks, hi John, if you could only make one form to sell, what would it be and why? I think the resounding form would be a mug, probably like, this shape mug. I really like this shape mug just because it's, I like the tall skinnier mugs because they keep it hot longer. If you have too wide, then it seems like it, it also is like really wobbly. Like if you have a wide base, then the liquid inside like splashes around. Like a little bit, I just think that's a good shape right there is like comes out and then in and then out because the lip, it feels good on your lips when it like comes out a little bit at the end. So it'd have to be a mug for sure because mugs, they just, they sell really well. They're at a good price point for people. People can buy one of them, they can buy a set of them. What kind of clay do I use? This is buff stoneware from Continental Clay, but I have used many different kinds of clay from them. B clay or dark iron stoneware, etc. What potter knowledge do you wish you had? There are so many different kinds of people out there and they all like different kinds of things. 
Just because you don't like something doesn't mean that you can't sell it or that someone else won't like it or that it's not even good. Like you might not like something right away and then two years later you might think like, that was actually really good. Sometimes you can be disappointed in things that you really shouldn't be disappointed in at all. Where do you buy a Mocha Monkey mug? I have a few Mocha Monkey mugs going up on Etsy this week. Otherwise you can go to Mocha Monkey in Waconia and buy one there. When you first started your business, what were the main challenges and how did you overcome them? Um, the main challenges I think for me was I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea, I had no experience. I had no confidence that I had any idea what I was doing. I didn't know anybody. That was probably the biggest struggle. And how did I overcome them? Kind of fake it till you make it a little bit, which is definitely still what I'm doing. No, having getting experience and just working through things and figuring it out gives you that confidence to, that you can overcome things. What kind of firing schedule do I run on a glaze kiln? So I use just the medium speed on the Scut digital kilns. Asks, can you throw a small dish garlic grater? I'd love to see that. You know, I'd have to look at what that is before I can tell you if I can throw it. Next question, Mateo asks, are you an industrial designer? No. Paige, done. Oh, that paper seriously just hit that plate. What a joke. The plate has a paper cut. How do you attach your bats? So there's two little pins. There's two pins, one here and one here. Oh, I just got clay on my face. And they have, they attach to pins that are stick up out of the wheel. What got you started in the pottery and the coffee business? I just took that one pottery class, loved it so much. It was a business management degree. And my mom said, hey, you gotta see this coffee shop in Waconia, Mocha Monkey. So we went there, super cool, got to know the owners and then bought it. What advice do you have for someone who's starting out other than lots of practice? Lots of practice is good. I would say if you wanna make a serious go at selling your pottery and artwork and just business in general, you need to put as much time into the marketing, promotional, sales, revenue generating side as you do the pottery. The pottery, actual making of pottery, I mean, it's not easy when you're starting out, but if you're gonna be doing it for a long time, the actual making of it is the easy part. The selling it is the part that you need to get your hands around, because that is the hard part. Like, finding places to sell, how do you, like pricing your work, promoting your work, branding yourself, getting a following, all that stuff. That's the, that's the probably more time consuming part. And it's not the part that most people and potters and artists wanna spend their time, but you do have to do it if you wanna make a living at it. Uh, how often do you, I clean my wheel? Well, I used to like never clean my wheel, but then when I got this wheel from Scut, I have, and, and this new studio too, I've been pretty good about cleaning it. At least like a couple times a week. It usually stays pretty clean. Do you have any advice on how to grow your Instagram page? I'll take a, a page out of Hammerly Ceramics playbook. Videos grow your following and pictures make sales. So if you want an Instagram that helps you make sales, you gotta grow it with some killer videos and then engage, engagement. Commenting back with people, commenting on others. Instagram loves engagement. Ah, uh, can you do a tutorial on how to throw a bird? I have no idea what that means or how to throw a bird, I'm sorry. So no, I cannot do that at this moment. Do you leave the walls of your pots a little thicker than usual? Yes, I do. When I plan to carve or when I wanna make sure that I'm gonna carve something, I will leave the walls thicker, for sure. I've carved through too many pieces. Why don't you already sell, why don't you sell online? If you do already, maybe I'm missing something. So I do sell online, but it's pretty infrequently. So I'll post like, I'll do an Etsy restock like I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm going for once a month. When you, when you decide to sell online, there's a large percentage of your time that has to go into photographing, putting pictures of things online, and then on the back end, you have to do a lot of packing and shipping. And so far in my pottery ceramics career, I have been able to sell the majority of my pottery in person, at coffee shops, at the Art Wander, like at shows, and while online is nice because I can, I reach a much bigger market of people, sometimes I just don't really feel like doing all that where I take pictures of stuff, posting them online, and then packing and shipping stuff. It's just easier. I wanna sell more online, I do, I wanna sell. And so I do do these Etsy restocks, do do. Uh -huh. oh, all right, approximately how many pots do you make each week or month? So this is something I've never been good at is keeping track of 
exactly how many pots, but it's probably widely varies. I'd say a good week we get between 100 and 200 pots, like all the way finished. So that'd be what, four or 500 a month maybe. How long did it take you to get to where you are? Well, it took me about 30 years from being born to get to where I am right now. But the pottery ceramics thing has been about a decade, about 10 years. I've only done the online really pottery universe for the last like two. I studied at Gustavus, I studied business there, took my first couple pottery classes there. And then after that, it's been kind of, I've self-taught after that. What camera do you use? Right now I'm shooting on a Canon 6D Mark II and we have a 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 lens. That's basically what everything is filmed on in the past like 40 videos. Alrighty, done. Last page already. Are we gonna make this, get this video within like less than 25 minutes? Last one question. Do you plan on doing any giveaways? We have a giveaway going on right now on the YouTube channel. Last week I threw 100 pots in celebration of reaching, getting over 50,000 subscribers and we're giving away a mug. So go check out that video if you wanna find out how to win. Will you add more to the Etsy? Yes, this week. Softness of clay for throwing. Um, I can usually tell when I'm wedging if I think that the clay is too hard. It should just be nice and easy and flow well without sticking to anything, you know? If it sticks to your hands or to the table, then it's probably too wet. And if it's hard to wedge it and it's just like not moving very easily, then I, yeah, I'd add water to it. We're so, we're so close to getting done with this and then I can focus on making plates. Have I used a kick wheel? Yes, I've used a kick wheel. They are, kick wheels are awesome, I love them. They're not as quick and as efficient as these electric wheels are, which is why I choose to use this. Yeah, they're cool, they're sweet. Have you ever used black clay? Nope, I've never used black clay. Any tips on throwing forms more? consistent and faster. Is it just practice, practice, practice? Yes. The answer to that is yes. It is practice, practice, practice. I would say, I don't know how you would, how do you get better besides just doing it a ton? I would say just challenge yourself with like sets of things. So weigh out like 20 balls of clay that are the same and try and throw the exact same form for each one. That really, really helps a lot. I threw, I threw 250 mugs for my wedding in 2013 and I still think that that was one of the best things for, for my throwing to develop is just to throw, like try and throw a same similar form over and over and over the same. Wow, it's a lot of talking. How do you attach an extra piece of clay like a cutout state to a mug? Well, I should do a video on that, a tutorial. Basically you, sl you score the both sides of both pieces of clay, so whatever you're attaching and whatever you wanna attach it to. And then you put slip, which is like liquefied clay, which is all over my hands right now. That acts as like the glue that locks the pieces that together, and then you just put them together. The main thing that you wanna make sure is that you're just attaching pieces together of clay that are the same consistency. Like if the mug is really dry and you're trying to put a wet piece of clay onto a dry mug, it's not gonna work, or it probably won't work. How do you make sure you're pulling evenly? My walls always seem to be thicker and thinner. This just comes back to like tons and tons of practice. You know, throw something, cut it open, look at it, find out where it was too thick or too thin, and then adjust how you throw based on what you see. Are, am I using Mako Flux to get them to drip? I actually, like Mako did send me some, some Flux. I have not used it at all yet. I have found that I've been able to get those glazes to drip pretty easily and well without using the Flux yet. I was planning on using it, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Do I dip glaze? Yes, I've only been dipping. Dip, dip, dip. I find dipping to be the most consistent, quickest, easiest, to, and, got, and getting the best results for me. Did you go to college and learn your craft or are you self-taught? Definitely a mix of both. So I took classes first. I've learned a lot since then and it's mostly been just learning by either reading or experimenting or YouTube videos or whatever. Down there to the final questions. I'm using a wood shim to get these bats off. Sometimes they don't want to pop off. Last couple questions. And then I'll move the camera around and you guys can just watch me sped up throw these plates a little bit. Whew.